Hi, my name is Cami. It's a real pleasure to be presenting at ICRS, even though I would have loved to be present in Bremen, but that would have been pretty far to travel to. So instead, I'm joining you from the CREOB in Morea, where I've been working for the past two and a half years, doing a PhD on coral restoration techniques with Dr. Leticia Edouin and Dr. Maggie Nug. And today I'm going to be sharing some of my results with you. I'm sure you're all aware that today's coral reefs are highly threatened, especially by global warming. Unfortunately, the future of coral reefs looks pretty bleak if we don't act to limit climate change. But there are ways to strengthen the resilience of coral reefs at a local scale, like the creation of marine protected areas, the mass propagation of coral larvae, coral transplantation, or the creation of artificial reefs, especially in areas where uh, reefs have been entirely destroyed. There is a good example in Indonesia where a whole reef that had been destroyed by blast fishing was restored using thousands of these spider-like structures, which allowed to stabilize the sediment and to offer a substrate for dozens of coral species to grow on. Artificial reefs like these can significantly increase the biodiversity of a site and also increase the recruitment rate of reef organisms. Traditionally, artificial reefs were just plain concrete, but now there's a lot of different shapes and uh, materials being tested for their success in harboring marine biodiversity. There are, in fact, 3D printed reefs being designed with all kinds of interesting shapes. Corals being at the base of reef ecosystems, it could be interesting to design a structure that could maximize coral recruitment, but also the survival and the diversity of coral juveniles, which would in turn increase the diversity in fish and other invertebrates coming to settle on these structures. Now, there are a lot of factors that come into play when we consider coral settlement. Most corals start out as tiny planktonic larvae that can swim until they find the perfect spot to settle and recruit into a new colony. What I find incredible is that these tiny larvae, they're able to see light, to see colors, to hear the sounds of a healthy reef, and to perceive chemical cues of other reef organisms. Now, all these cues are going to help the larvae choose the perfect spot to settle. Usually, they go towards cryptic microhabitats so that they can be protected from predation. For instance, grazing fish like parrotfish can easily scrape off coral juveniles when they feed on seaweed. While settlement experiments typically use ceramic tiles as a substrate, we wanted to know which other materials could be used to maximize coral recruitment. So we worked together with a French company called Seaboost that design and build unique artificial reefs and send us a lot of different innovative artificial materials. So the aim of the project was to study the performance of different artificial materials and also different textures as coral recruitment substrates. In order to test this, we set up two different experiments on the far reef of Morea. Morea is a tiny island in French Polynesia in the South Pacific. In the first experiment, we tested 10 different artificial materials. The tiles were 10 by 10 centimeters and they were arranged on a threaded rod with a plastic spacer in between each tile so as to create a cryptic habitat for the larvae to settle on both sides. We installed the racks on the far reef of Morea between 8 and 13 meters depth and retrieved them after six months on the site. In March and April of 2019, there was a massive bleaching event in Morea and in the surrounding islands. In fact, on the north shore of Morea, there was almost 50% mortality in shallow four reef corals. We thought this bleaching might influence the results of our experiments, so we decided to do a replicate the following year. So after analyzing the tiles in 2020, all the tiles were perfectly cleaned and put out again on the four reef for the exact same immersion time. Then in 2021, after analyzing each tile, they were left as they were, put back out on the four reef so that we could follow the survival rate and the growth of our recruits every six months. So on these graphs, you see the average number of live coral recruits per 100 square centimeters of shelter size of 10 different materials and letters representing significantly different groups. Now, as soon as we started to count the recruits in 2021, we noticed that there was something different. We counted a lot more coral recruits than we expected. In fact, there were about three times as many coral recruits in 2021 than in 2020 on exactly the same materials. 
Now, this is very likely due to the 2019 bleaching event, which caused a lot of mortality on the fall reef, but also caused a lot of stress on the surviving colonies. This stress probably caused the reproduction rate to plummet in the spawning season of late 2019, similarly to what other studies have observed. Now, if we assume that 2021 is a normal year for coral recruitment, then the recruitment in a post-bleaching year is barely one-third of the recruitment in a normal year. Going back to the materials, the ones that had the most recruitment were the PVC, the Portland concrete, and the 3D printed concrete. Now, you might be familiar with those uh, 3D printers that can print a whole house in concrete in just a couple of hours. Well, Seaboost, the company I'm working with, are using one of these printers to build uh, elaborate artificial reefs in the Mediterranean. And we wanted to know if this uh, 3D printed concrete would be successful as a substrate for coral growth. And it turned out it works extremely well. It might be due to all the ridges and the rough surfaces that are attractive to coral larvae. In any case, the 3D concrete had significantly more recruits than the glass tiles which is understandable, glass being so smooth that 80% of its surface was actually still bare after six months on the reef. 3D concrete was also better than porous concrete, which is a material made out of cement and small stones, which allows to have hundreds of small holes inside of the tile. Predation being the main driving force in coral recruit survival, we thought that porous concrete should be successful as a substrate for recruitment, but it turns out uh, it's among the least successful, at least when we compare only the sheltered sites. Perhaps there is too much competition between the coral recruits and other benthic organisms on these tiles. Now the results might look very different when we consider the sites that are fully exposed to predation instead of only looking at the sheltered sites on the racks. This leads me to my second experimental setup, where I tested five different textures that were set up horizontally and exposed to currents, to predation by coral eating and grazing fish. So we tested glass tiles, PVC tiles, and PVC tiles that were molded with four different sized square holes. Then we also tested porous concrete, and porous concrete that was molded in the same mold as the textured PVC, so with the added square holes. And these tiles were left for nine months on the reef, both in 2020 and in 2021. And so here you can see the average number of recruits per 100 square centimeters on the whole tile, both in 2020 and in 2021. And again, we can see here this huge increase in recruitment in 2021, just like in the first experiment. This could be explained by a significant drop in reproductive output post bleaching event. Now in orange, you see the PVCs and in teal, you have the porous concrete tiles. And it's very obvious that porous concrete has a lot more recruits than the PVC tiles overall. But when you look at the recruitment on the different orientations of the tiles, there are some interesting patterns that emerge. So now on the top graph, you see the recruitment per 100 square centimeters on the upper sides of each tile. In the middle graph, you see the vertical sides and the last graph shows the recruitment on the lower sides of the tiles. The first thing to note is that there's almost no recruitment on glass tiles. Same on the smooth PVC tiles that were facing upwards and on the sides. So either the larvae don't settle on perfectly flat surfaces or if they do they get scraped off by grazing fish. However, when we look at the bottom of our tiles, there is no significant difference in recruitment between all the tested materials. So there's quite a lot of recruitment on the lower sides of the tiles, even if those are perfectly flat. Now we saw that both types of porous concrete had the most success. So actually, when exposed to predation, the complexity of artificial material definitely allows for more coral recruitment and also for more survival of the coral recruits, as I'm seeing now that I'm regularly retrieving them from the fall reef after almost two years on the site. Now, it's also interesting to note that there was no significant difference between the porous concrete and the porous concrete with the added square holes. So actually, it's not necessarily the most complex materials that have the most success. Perhaps just the small holes of the porous concrete are enough to attract 
the coral larvae and allow the recruits to survive long enough to grow into bigger colonies. So, if global warming persists, we can expect to have more and more loss in coral cover in their diversity and thus in the structural complexity of the reef. But as we saw with the dramatic decline in coral recruitment post bleaching event, we can also expect successive stress on the colonies to significantly decrease their reproductive abilities. This means that as extreme temperature events become more and more frequent, less juveniles will be able to settle and to survive on the already damaged reefs, slowing down their recovery and limiting their ability to withstand any further stressful events. The results of our experiments are going to lead to a better understanding of the many factors that influence the first life stages of corals. We will be able to discern correlations between artificial materials and coral recruitment, but also between the composition of the benthic communities colonizing the tiles and the abundance and the survival of coral recruits. In the end, the results will also be used to help design artificial reefs that can actually enhance coral recruitment and significantly increase the survival and even the diversity of these recruits. So after having identified the materials that have the most success, either in a sheltered or exposed position, we can combine the advantages of each material and each shape to create a complex artificial reef. Now there are a lot of fascinating new approaches that could be used to increase the resilience of coral reefs. And I'm very excited to be able to share further results as I continue with my PhD. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email and thank you so much for your attention. And finally, I'd like to give a big thanks to my supervisors and to my amazing colleagues at the CREOB who helped me so much in the field and in the lab. And thanks to the team at Seaboost and the Luxembourg National Research Fund for allowing me to carry out this research.